All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. I have a copy here of Dr. David Perlmutter's Grain Brain. This is a good book. There's good information in here. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that this is my favorite book or that it's necessarily an exciting read because, in my opinion, it is not. But there's a lot of great information in this volume um, about the detrimental health consequences of consumption of gluten. So those of you who watch my channel know that I preach a gluten-free system. I'm not telling people that they have to, or I don't suggest that people just quit it forever. I'm not saying that you can never eat gluten again, but the constant consumption of these proteins, these very difficult to digest gluten proteins, is not a wise thing. It destroys your digestive system, folks, and it does so um, by way of wiping out your colonies of villi. And your villi are your absorptive tissues that line your small intestine. Your villi absorb nutrients once they are pre-digested in the stomach. So think about that for a minute. In a metaphoric sense, that's almost like having a gas tank with a hole in it. As you fill it up, as you fill your vehicle up with gas, it leaks right out. And how is it? How is a destroyed colony of villi or absorptive tissue similar to a gas tank with a hole in it? Folks, your villi absorb nutrients, minerals, etc. from the food you eat. If you're wiping out these colonies of absorptive tissues, you are not going to be so able to supply your body with adequate fuel, plain and simple. And this is really the, one of the main reasons why I promote a gluten-free or a low-gluten diet. Because after years of eating gluten, now... Whatever you eat, regardless of how fancy it is or organic or, you know, full of enzymes or nutrition, you're not going to be able to absorb it. And this is how chronic deficiencies are fostered. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, the establishment on the mainstream USDA food pyramid this is why the establishment has erected the food pyramid to have the lowest portion of the food pyramid, the foods that they want you eating the most of. It's gluten-containing foods, breads, cereals, pastas, etc. Why do they want the masses at large consuming a food variety or a type of food that wipes out your absorptive tissues, that wipes out your ability to absorb minerals, etc. A little strange, in my opinion. Now, 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 excuse me. Now, obviously, folks, there are gluten free grains and starches, pastas, etc. So, depending on how you look at the USDA food pyramid, you know, you could look at it like, okay, I'll just eat a lot of gluten-free breads, pastas, you name it. But folks, that's not what they're preaching. They know that the majority of the people are going to look at that and go, okay, I need to eat bread. I need to eat pasta and all this stuff. Bread tastes good, guys, but in my opinion, it's not a food. Not the way it's being made today with the glyphosate-riddled grains. The gluten-containing grains. There's so much glyphosate and herbicide and all the crap. The larvicide in the grains nowadays, it's not even funny. That alone should uh, raise concern for most people. Now, if you look into the research of longevity experts, such as but not limited to Luigi Coronaro, who wrote the book How to Live to Be 100, very interesting man of antiquity, he claimed that quality homemade bread made from... The right ingredients was one of man's best food, especially with honey, if I remember properly. But he was from a very, very long time ago. I can't, I can't remember when Luigi Cornaro, Cornaro 
was alive. I'll, I would look it up on the computer right now, but it will cause the uh, video to, to freeze. Let's look it up on my iPhone. Luigi Cornaro. Born uh, 1484 and died May 8th, 1566. And he was from uh, Pada Padua, Italy. I'm not sure if you how to pronounce that. But this man lived a remarkably long time for his time period. Um, and he was all about caloric restriction and structured eating. The breads back then were clearly much healthier for people. Just by looking at the fact that they didn't have all the, you know, the herbicide and all the crap, the glyphosate, that's so commonplace in mainstream breads, grains, cereals, you name it. Here's the thing, you guys. Listen to this. Everybody likes to demonize animal products. Everybody likes to demonize certain foods, this, that, the other. Everybody likes to demonize the tobacco industry for their health problems. And I'm not saying that there isn't issues with mainstream tobacco and this, that, and the other. But here's the thing. Here's what goes non-noticed or unnoticed by most people. And here's one enemy system against human health that everybody's not talking about for the most part. People who like to blame, you know, white sugar on all their health problems and salt and this and that and stress and tobacco. It's like... People are focusing on issues that aren't main issues. And here's the thing. What is the food item that most people eat worldwide or in the United States? Like, what do, what do people base their diet off of? Most people in the United States eat primarily a plant-based diet. Most people can't afford to eat expensive filet mignon and all this stuff all the time. Most people are eating a lot of grains and cereals and breads and processed foods. And these are more often not than not filled with gluten and grains, etc. So yeah, most people are eating largely plant-based. All the crackers, all the crap. Now I'm not saying you are. But I'm saying that a lot of the plant-based foods are full of grains, gluten-containing grains and starches, and they're very cheap. The cereals, the this, the that, the other. So people buy this stuff because it's cheap calories. But they're eating gluten mixed with sugar, mixed with additives, mixed with artificial colorings, and like excit uh, excitotoxins. These are the foods that are creating the most problems, in my opinion. Now, obviously, there's a lot more that I could list, bad foods. But guys, this food destroys your body's ability to digest and assimilate nutrients into your protoplasm. This food is a Trojan horse weapon system that is more often than not very cheap. So it's easy to obtain. It's cheap calories, right? Yeah, well, those cheap calories are simultaneously destroying your body's absorptive abilities. It's like, it's like literally like punching holes in your gas tank. So one of the first steps that I put people on if they want to get healthy is you do my uh, jump program. You load the jump program. This is a parallel on the matrix. Film, tank load the jump program jump program if I can speak today you load the jump program you take the jump and you do 30 days without gluten and 30 days without vegetable oil simultaneously people say how oh, how could I do this guys I promise you'll live I promise you'll be able to to make it and you simultaneously as you get rid of the gluten and the vegetable oils you consume if you wish wish to, gluten-free grains and starches, rice, potatoes, etc. These are much more stable calorie sources, carbohydrate sources, than breads and pasta and all the whole wheat garbage. This is all stuff that's advertised as being healthy when it is so far from that. It is absolute shit of the highest order. It is absolute shit of the highest order, folks. We get off the vegetable oils as well, which are directly fueling the heart disease industry, a multi-billion dollar industry. 
Let's take a look, you guys, at how many people uh, heart disease kills every year. How many people does heart disease... What is going on out there? <laughs> wow. Here's uh, from CDC.gov. Listen to this, you guys. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for men, women, and people of most racial and ethnic groups in the United States. One person dies every 36 seconds in the United States from cardiovascular disease. About 659,000 people die in the United States from heart disease each year. That's one in every four adults. That's one in every four adults. So we get off. And here's the thing. Gluten and vegetable oil directly feed this industry, the heart disease industry, folks. It directly feeds it. So we get off the vegetable oils. We get off the gluten. And I would highly suggest if you're in, if you have heart issues, ladies and gentlemen, I would find a medical doctor who's also a naturopathic doctor and go see them. But I would strongly consider vitamin C as ascorbic acid with lysine. I would follow the Linus Pauling uh, heart protocol. Remarkably effective. And there's other things that can be added as well, like uh, magnesium. Um, coenzyme Q10 is remarkably good for the heart. Uh, things like carnitine. There's The list goes on and on and on. Uh, Dr. Steven Sinatra has a pretty legit protocol for like heart protocol. But I would highly suggest, first and foremost, looking into Linus Pauling's work. It's dirt cheap to apply that protocol. There's something making noise outside. It's driving me crazy. I'm going to wrap this one up, you guys. I want to see what that noise is. But it's really simple. You like my, my system is so basic. You take your shoes off. You walk on the ground. You walk barefoot on the dirt, the grass, and the cement every day for a minimum of 15 minutes. I do it over an hour, usually two to three. You get off the gluten, you get off the vegetable oils, you increase your mineral intake, you make sure you're getting an adequate intake of the 90 essential nutrients. And there's so much more that could be said, but I'm going to wrap this one up. Peace be with you all.